Hi, my name is Heath, and welcome to Media Diet Comics Commentary. Today, we're talking about this comic, Last Song. It's a number three. It's published by Black Mask, and Black Mask, Black Mask, and the creators are Holly Interlandi and Sally Cantorino. Interesting thing about Black Mask Studios, they're based here in L.A., just on Sunset Boulevard, and one of the three partners in the publishing company is Brett Gurowitz from Bad Religion and Epitaph Records. And so this comic about a rock band is published by an imprint that has a lot of experience with rock bands. And it's a great comic. It's kind of an interesting read held up to Holler, number two, because both are rock and roll comics. This one's set in the late 90s. Um, parts of it are in Seattle. Uh, parts of it are in other parts of the country. I actually don't know where it's based. might be in L.A., um, but Interlandi and Cantorino do a really good job about capturing the dynamics of a band and the relationships of band members and the impact that stresses can have on a band, um, as well as stresses from outside the band, other you know, just your general life and the impact that that has. Um, the comic art is relatively narrative and straightforward, and the comic itself is relatively narrative. There's a, a lot of story, a lot of talking, um, not a lot of description or captions, mostly to, to set scene where they are, airport, Holiday Inn, stuff like that. Um, but it's an interesting comic. The The artist's style, uh, Cantorino's style, reminds me a little bit of a cross between Paul Pope and Jessica Abel, as odd as that might sound. Um, and it's an interesting read. My My favorite parts of the comic are the kind of live performance moments. Let's see if I can find a good example of one of the live performance moments. We've got a scene there from one of the shows, and I think that's largely because I really miss going to shows <laughs> during this pandemic. I miss going to hear bands play. Um, there's another scene from a show. And and so the, the capturing of the band's performance even as well as the, the band's rehearsal, is, is really interesting. Um, it's also interesting because it incorporates aspects of rock journalism. And so here's kind of a faux uh, interview or article uh, about the band. Um, there are other parts of the comic where, where that comes into play, and there will be magazine covers or content from um, a magazine to kind of move the story along to, to show you what's happened recently and, and how it fits in. Here's some rehearsal shots for those of you who've been in bands and, and had practice or rehearsal. Uh, here's another example. It might even be the same piece that we just looked at. Um, but really neat to see aspects of the rock press come into play. Here he's at a coffee shop and they're actually kind of looking at and referring to an article together. And then another neat scene is when they're at SeaTac, the Seattle Tacoma airport, and he goes to like a Hudson News or some newsstand. Um, this is Nikki, the lead singer and kind of driving force behind the band. And you see some of the other magazines there on the newsstand, including NME. And I think I saw a reference to alternative press elsewhere in the comic. And so neat representation of live performance, rehearsal or practice, uh, rock journalism. Um, but my neatest, my favorite part of the comic is this sequence focusing on Nora. And so to Holly and Sally, thank you very much for this sequence of pages. It's just one, two, three, four, five pages. But it takes us on a journey of how someone discovers a band that they really love, how they track down the records or music for the band that they really love, or at least how we used to. There's the reference to AP that I was mentioning. Um, so before the internet, just what it meant to discover a band, track down their records or their CDs, and to really dive into them to learn as much as you can. And, and this story arc, which begins with her being skeptical of most things that are popular, buying used clothes, buying used records, coming across this, this band that she didn't know about, breaking her rules toward older things or lesser known things because they were a popular band, but really connecting with the music of this fictional band 
ecstasy, being bothered when she encounters other fans. But then when she goes to the mall with her seem, seems to be stepfather, uh, you know, buying another record by them or a compact disc, I think at this point, and uh, playing it in the car with him. And, and it actually ending up being kind of a quiet bonding moment between the two of them. As, as they drive back from the mall. And, and so that is actually one of my favorite parts of the comic because as a music listener and a music fan, as a fan of bands over the years, um, this experience, uh, they just captured it. They really, they really did. Um, and so that was fun. So the point of the comic though, not having read the first two issues, I don't know what's come before. Um, I don't know if it's the same band, the same storyline, or if each issue is kind of a different band at an end moment in the band's career. But this is basically the story of the dissolution and destruction or folding of this band, Ecstasy. Um, two of the players, we've got Nikki, who's the lead singer-guitarist. We've got Dre, who I think is the drummer, but I'm not sure. Might not be. Um, see if I can find one of the live scenes to, to pick it. And I don't know, not the drummer, the, the female character is the drummer. So I don't really know what, what Dre does, I think guitar. Um, but anyway, they end up having a relationship that goes beyond friendship. And it's confusing to the two of them, um, not out, not experienced with gay partners, um, ends up leading to some tensions in the band. Uh, they've known each other since they were preteens and teenagers. Uh, later on in the book, one of them ends up having a relationship, just a normal heterosexual relationship, which introduces additional tension. And so there are several things coming together to break up the band. The relationship tensions, a uh, member that seems to be addicted to some substances, and some inter interband tension and struggle, as well as some other challenges outside the band. One of the places that they used to frequent and play, I think, has closed. And so the neighborhood is changing, the scene is changing. This is kind of neat, the, the way it is now and the way it used to be. Also interesting to think about the places that make a scene and how changes in those places can, can affect the people and bands and, and art being made in that scene. Um, so a lot of things coming together to, to affect the band. It is actually based in LA. The comic is says here popular LA-based band, Ecstasy. Um, and so a really neat rock and roll comic. Kind of quiet, not too much rock and roll lifestyle, though there is some visual reference to it. This is the scene that kind of makes me think that one of the members might have a substance abuse issue. Oh, I'm not going to find it. Um, in any event, good rock and roll, good rock and roll comic. Such a good rock and roll comic that they even include a playlist on the inside back cover as though it were a 90-minute mixed tape. Side A comes to us from Holly, side B from Sally. And I've actually tried to get as close to this as I can in an actual playlist in Apple Music and in Spotify. So in the blog post for this, I'll, I'll link to the two, to the two playlists. Um, one side's a little more rockin' than the other. Um, kind of a lot of 90s uh, shoegaze, ambient post-rock kind of stuff. It's, it probably doesn't really capture it. And two of the songs I couldn't actually get, um, so I got as close to them by title, at least, that, that, I, that I possibly could. And so, interesting, interesting comic. Brett Gurowitz from Bad Religion and Epitaph, publishing company, a rock and roll comic, two strong female creators, art and story that reads well, neat mix of rock band experience, fandom, popular press, the experience of a fan, the arc of discovering a band, and then even some, some music that you can listen to while you're reading the comic or, or otherwise. And so, last song. Really interesting comic. Did not know what to expect, but I try to pick up some independent stuff when I see it in the store to encourage its distribution and being stocked. And I don't know that I would have bought this otherwise. But highly enjoyed it. Be sure to check it out. Last song. Holly Interlandi and Sally Cantorino, published by Black Mask out of L.A. This is number three. This has been a Media Diet Comics commentary. My name is Heath. Please join us next time. Bye.